Then he uh, mentioned the Brighton PS Pete Martin, the MP for the area in Preston, and Denise Aguada, the MP in Victoria, are both in Ottawa because of the budget. We weren't able to come, but they send their request, and that's what it was. The CRD, Jeff Young, the CRD chair, was invited as was Chris Postman. I did receive a call from Chris who said that he had a conflict, uh, was unable to, to be present, but he would otherwise have been here, and he certainly wished to be well. Um, as far as the MLAs are concerned, uh, let me go for those who are not here until I get to the one who is and give them a chance to speak. Um, we have Phil Lennon was invited, Mary Penner was invited, Murray Cole was invited, and Ida Chong was invited. Uh, the two ministers responsible uh, in the first instance and the two local ministers, none were able to come. The rest were sent, but none were able to come. However, the good news, uh, John Horgan is the MLA for the area. And he is present, and I'd like to uh, get to the floor if you would. Uh, <laughs> and uh, being here. Uh, I only have one piece of paper, and I'll, I'll dispense with it quickly. It was given to me by uh, a friend I just met tonight. Uh, he's been corresponding with me through email. Uh, he sent a note to Mary Cole, and he got back the following. Thank you for e your email. Your thoughts are appreciated. Sincerely, Mary Cole. So, <laughs> that's good news. That's good news. If those thoughts are appreciated, and I'm certain our presence here tonight will be appreciated as well. There's not a great deal that I can add that I haven't already said before or hasn't already been said tonight, except for, that's where I work. Is that cool? Vicky <laughs> Husband's my boss. <laughs> Terry's my boss. Arnie's my boss. I'm one of the luckiest guys in this room to have the opportunity and the privilege to represent this area and the people that live there. More importantly, as a born and raised Victorian, I've had the opportunity over the past thousand days to see the tragedy, the tragedy of bad government decisions, but the hope that can emerge from that. When we decided, the Journal of the Steering Committee and others decided to hold this meeting tonight, I was petrified. I was petrified because two years ago, when we put out the call, you all came. Over the past two years, the Victoria Times columnist, I cannot say enough about the mysterious editorial writer who's pounding the government at every opportunity. the CRD have dropped their partisan cloaks. Uh, Honorable David Anderson, of course, uh, by leaving politics, you're absolved of any partisanship. And, and so uh, I, won't, I won't put a label on him, but for, unfortunately, in many instances, I, I pack around a label and a, and a banner and I wear a uniform, and it often closes doors. But it also, in this case, has opened many, many doors. I have met conservatives. I have become friends with Greens, with Liberals, with, uh, with New Democrats that have left and have come back. This is not about partisanship. It's about the land and the place that we live. It's about the Sioux Nation. It's about the Sianu people in Beecher Bay. It's about Pachida in, in Fort Renfrew. It's about the beauty and splendor of the place that we are so fortunate to live in. And the government of British Columbia has neglected the people who live here and the land that we reside on for a thousand days. I want to leave you with just one thing. I, I don't want to belabor the point, politicians. I get to talk tomorrow about this in the legislation. I assure you, I will be doing it loudly and forcefully, as I've been doing in the past. This provided such a tremendous opportunity for me. To, I, I'm a member of Surf Rights. My friend Yvonne is at the back of the room. I haven't been on a board since I lived in Australia. There's no chance I'm putting on a, a, a black suit and jumping in the water unless Calvin goes with me. Uh, but I've met so many people who care passionately about this place that we call home. and care passionately about things like the regional growth strategy. My friend Rob Fleming is here with us tonight and, and he's grateful at the meeting of tonight because we're missing a caucus meeting. And we're very, very happy about that. But, but Rob was a councillor in the city of Victoria when the regional growth strategy found its footing and became the way we were going to develop the region that we live in. He knows what, what went into that. He knows the horse trade that went on between different points of view, between different communities. It was hard fought. 
but it is the plan that we are all living under happily, legally. Growth can happen in Langford. Growth will not happen in Machos. Growth will not happen in Highlands, if my boss Vicky has anything to do with that. So Rob was there making the, the trade-offs, doing the hard work to get to the point where we could have a strategy where we could develop, we could see economic development and employment on the land base, but we could also preserve those special areas and preserve, more importantly, the traditions and cultures of our first peoples. That has been ignored by the BC Liberals. I have tried and tried and tried to get through them. Today I got a call from a report from the Taiyi. This story will be on in computers maybe tonight or perhaps tomorrow morning. And he called me and said, he just had, the reporter had just had a, a, an interview with, with uh, Bill Bennett, who I've tried very hard to, to work with, uh, as well as also his, his predecessors over the, I think there's been four ministers responsible for this just inside his ministry, not to mention two forest ministers uh, and, and numerous others that have touched the file. But Bill Bennett said in the interview today, this would have been a lot easier to do two years ago. Really? Really? <laughs> That is it. That's great news. If only we had done this two years ago. If only, if only, as Arnie said, and as Terry said, and, and as Calvin and his students deter uh, determined, if only compensation and consultation had happened a thousand days ago, Bill Bennett wouldn't have had to answer that with a stupid response. He would have been able to say, we did the right thing. Government of the people did the right thing, protected the public interest, attempted to shore up the bottom line of the foundering uh, forest company. It didn't work. They went under. We preserved the land. Life goes on. That would have been the right thing to do. <laughs> and I want to say again from the, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I, I, we befriended so many people in this room, and I see many of my bosses sitting here, and I'm hopeful that uh, I'll be able to continue to do the work that you want me to do on this issue in our home. Not that. Go off that one. That's the wrong picture. Or is it my closing? Yeah. I, I want to put a shout out to the Dogwood Initiative and to the Western Canada Wilderness Committee. I want to I want to pay uh, my respects to Keith Martin, who I've been working with, to Mike Hicks, who I've been working with, to Randall Garrison, to to all of the people, all of the people who have, who have come forward and said this is not about politics. This is about the right thing. I when I talk to young people and I talk to voters who have turned off, they're yearning, they're yearning for a government to say we screwed up. We're going to try and do better. You know, okay, that makes sense. We're going to use what a what a good thing to do. You screwed up, do better. We're forgiving people. Don't let them off the hook on this one. Don't forgive them until they do the right thing. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>